Hello everyone and welcome to the final part of Panzer Dragoon on the Sega Sun. I'm one wild sheep yet again and what's this? Hmm, isn't that the tower that we're meant to be going across and stopping the dragon from reaching? I think it is and what's going on here? Oh god, some... I don't know what these things are, I think they're called ancients and it... Well, they're, they're doing damage. Hmm. This can't be good. This can't be good at all. I hope that no city gets invaded by these things. Hmm. What's the likelihood of that happening? Oh, well, we'll find out in episode 6 because we're flying through a city. And oh my god, the music in this stage is just amazing. It really gives you that sort of climactic feel. And that is cheap shooting bullets at me before I have control of my dragon game. Now this folks is the penultimate stage of the game, this is when we are reaching up and taking care of the Dark Dragon. Now the Dark Dragon himself throughout the stage, he's literally here just to annoy you. You can hurt him if you want, but you can't kill him, he is literally there as a bit of a nuisance. What you're going to want to do is focus on every other enemy as instead of just him. Although whenever the Dark Dragon does shoot at you, take out his bullets straight away because his bullets will, well they'll, they'll hurt. Adoy. But like I said at the end of the previous part, this part here, this stage, this is... This stage is literally an endurance run. This is when the game's going, okay, you know what, uh, this, you're at the end of the game, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I think it's time to put the big boy shoes on and shoot you with everything we got. Including two new enemy types, this brand new enemy type right here that looks like some sort of weird crab-like creature. Which will so hover in the air for a split second after dropping out of water and shoot laser beams at you. After their initial laser beam blast they won't shoot you again but it is wise to try and take them out before they get a chance to shoot you because well they do a lot of damage if you leave them. Of course sometimes they have ex extremely bad aim like that guy but there. And of course you have a massive, massive drop ship that you can try and take out. Now the drop ship will drop more of the laser beam guys to try and shoot you. So, like I said, this is literally just... It's just an endurance run. Just keep trying to survive until you reach the end of the stage, that's all I can say. When you reach around this point... Basically, I think it's around this point. Yeah, around by here. Just fill out give up trying to shoot the enemies, I think, because... You're gonna get hurt if you continue trying to shoot the enemies. Just do your best to avoid the gunfire and just shoot randomly as well because sometimes you might be able to clip them. Like there, I managed to, managed to get the guys with the laser blasts, which, which is fortunate. Honestly, all you, all you need to do with this stage is just avoid everything. Look at this, it's <laughs> freaking insane! I'm so glad I didn't do the commentary live for this one now because if I did, I don't know. My commentary would probably consist of, whoa, ah! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Bit of knuckles in there. Anyway, near as I say, if you hit the bridges or any of the things in the environment, obviously it's gonna hurt. I mean, I drag and face plant it into a bridge. It's not gonna be one of those instances where it's just gonna tickle, is it? Unless the bridge is made out of the same stuff that uh, bouncy castles are made out of. In that case, it'll, it'll tickle, and you bounce off, and it'd be quite comedic, huh? Anyway, needless to say, your biggest enemy in the stage is everything. <laughs> everything is equally as devastating to you. All the enemies are devastating because obviously they're difficult to dodge. And the environment, oh dear god, the environment is difficult. Of course, I do recommend just trying to kill as many enemies as you can just to get your hit score up so you can actually get more credits for the next stage, which is the final boss of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. You can feel it, you can literally feel it. But one of the unique things about the stage is it literally just ends. <laughs> You're gonna see it now. There's no boss fight to this level whatsoever, there's nothing like that. As soon as the music cuts out, the stage just ends. Episode 6 is now completed. And I did, I missed like, I missed over half the enemies in that stage, Jesus. Oh, well, time for the final boss battle of the game against the evil Dark Dragon! Mm. It's you and me now. Mm. Oh no. He appears to be going into the tower. 
Hmm, this could be most problematic. Hmm, saucy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving the ride of that type of voice. Anyway, as you can see, the towers opened up, and we, we we've effectively failed a mission. Go us! <laughs> but no, no, we have a chance to redeem ourselves in the last episode here. Time to take on the Dark Dragon in his final form. As you can guess, him reaching the tower turns him into... Shenron? Grant us the wish that we desire, Shenron, almighty one. I wish that you die. So basically... <laughs> What you want to do for this boss fight by here is don't rely on your laser beams at all. Rely- no, no, what am I saying? Rely on your laser beams, don't rely on your blaster shots. Your blaster shots don't do any, barely any damage to this guy. You want to lock onto his face and target him with the laser beams. It's very difficult to hit his weak spot without using the lock-on lasers, so just be very careful of that. His, at this point of the fight, his main form of attack is literally using Tail Whip. And unlike the Tail Whip in Pokemon, which just lowers your defense, this actually packs quite a mean punch. And also, he has his Sonic Boom attack from previous the previous time we fought him. Now, the Sonic Boom attack is a lot bigger, and it looks like he effectively tries to aim for you this time, so be very careful when dealing against this guy. Periodically, actually, I say periodically, very rare occasions, he's going, to he's going to shoot out these enemies that are going to try and ram into you and knock down your health. Just shoot them out of the sky whenever they pop out, and for the most part, this boss fight is simple enough when you know his pattern. It's just a matter of reacting to his pattern, so you know exactly what he's going to do. Now, when he gets to this point, when he's actually charging up his laser beam, this is your chance to go all out. Don't use your laser blasts on him. Basically spam the attack button and shoot him as much as you can with your laser beam. It is possible to dodge that laser blast using the dodge mechanic that I explained earlier on where you have to double tap the D-pad. It's a bit awkward to pull off so just be careful of that and for the most part just keep an eye on him as he's shooting you. <laughs> just dodge all the bullets, shoot all the bullets he shoots out of the sky and uh, yeah. Now these little things that are also surrounding him they will occasionally shoot up lasers at you. Now, there's not much you can do about these guys, these small little things that are surrounding him shooting lasers at you, apart from lit targeting them with your laser blast. Uh, they're more of a nuisance to try and stop you hitting the boss himself, to be perfectly honest, but hey, with that folks, we are practically there. Just continue dodging, continue flailing, and he's going to repeat the same tactics he's been doing all the way through the fight up until now. And honestly, as a boss fight, this is perfect for like the end game. It takes a lot of skill, you need to know what you're doing to beat him. And with that, he's gonna freeze. <laughs> freeze in hell, dragon. Mm. And there we go, folks. The dark dragon is making my ears bleed, and he is now dying. We have, victor we have victory. We have the victory. So that means we have won the game, folks. We have saved the world from whatever the tower is. And this dragon... Yay, I guess. Despite the fact the world's post-apocalyptic and it's mostly dead anyway. But that's beside the point. Ugh. Anyway, time for the cutscene. Now we beat the game. It's just me. Does the cutscenes run a lot quicker than the game it does, itself does? Again, I guess it makes sense, so... What the hell? Oh my god, I got a bubble shield! Wait, no! I didn't know dragons had telekinesis. This makes no sense! Anyway, using his mighty nose of his, the dragon does a noble sacrifice. And he destroys the tower. I don't know why he destroys the tower, like the only being that could use this tower is dead itself, so I don't understand the point. Just leave the tower standing, but that's basically... Maybe I'm nitpicking at this point. But yeah, sure, leave us on an uncharted island with no way to escape. Thanks, game. And little do you know, the Dragon Rider starved to death. But this, folks, has been Panzer Dragoon. One of the greatest games on the Sega Saturn, and despite how short the game is, this truly is a reason to own this console.
So in closing of this game folks, I have to give my opinions. This is a fantastic, phenomenal game for the sake of Saturn, an amazing exclusive I do say so myself. The soundtrack of this game is top notch, it is truly a beautiful score. If you get the time, just listen to the soundtrack, just look it up in YouTube, it is absolutely amazing to listen to. The gameplay is absolutely phenomenal, I love how the... Basically the fact you can aim in any direction adds a whole new dynamic to the on-rail shooting genre. It's just an interesting new dynamic that really makes the game feel a bit really, really alive. You know, you really feel like you're in the middle of the battle. You need to dodge everything you need to think strategically to get through. Well, of course, the gameplay could be a bit improved. It is a bit twitchy at times. Overall, though, I love it. The graphics are pretty damn good for early Sega Saturn. It's obviously they obviously haven't aged too well, but the art design is top notch. I love the artwork of this game. Absolutely phenomenal artwork. It's just an amazing game all around, and I would honestly recommend this to anybody who owns a Sega Saturn. If you own a Sega Saturn. It's your duty to pick up Panzer Dragoon, unless of course you don't like fast-paced action games. But if you do like fast-paced, challenging action games, this game will be right up your alley. It's just, I don't know, it's just like a little masterpiece that sort of goes unnoticed. I mean, I don't even see this game LP'd all that much on YouTube. And as Sega's answer to Star Fox, while Star Fox 64 was a bit more of a refinement over the genre, this this game made an advancement over the rail shooter genre that not many games afterwards followed in doing. It, it, it's kind of really strange how such a big advancement on the genre didn't get done again in the future with the exception of this own game series. I think it's mainly because of, um, it's probably, I assume it's probably a bit awkward to make a shooter where you can shoot in 360 degrees, all 360 degrees, I don't know. I know it won't work in Star Fox because you find spaceships and it'll look weird, but eh, I digress. This has been Panzer Dragoon, ladies and gentlemen. A fantastic game for the Sega Saturn. I hope you've all enjoyed the LP. I know I've enjoyed making it, and I shall catch you all again in another LP, folks. So with that, thank you all for watching. Don't be sheepish, people. I'll see you next time. Bye!